Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today is the much anticipated and hotly disputed Moonman M800. This one is in the gorgeous Galaxy finish. I'm hoping Ford will come out with an all new 1966 Galaxy 800 to complement my pen. As if. I was so excited about getting this pen that I did the unboxing video first and ripped that sucker open before I was able to film this intro. Do you want a sneak preview? Did you see it? You want me to do it again? Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. Then let's unbox it and explore the galaxy right now. So this is the pen that was the subject of my rant on my Pass Gas with Doug first episode, the Moonman M800, for being so expensive. And I also predicted at that point that the uh, pen would come down in price when it was offered by Moonman with a Moonman nib. And I was proven right with, for just a few weeks, a couple weeks after the initial release of the Moonman M800 with a Bach nib. It was available on eBay with a Moonman nib. And so I bought one. I bought the Galaxy version. I'm calling it Galaxy because it's the same color. I think it's going to be the same color as my Galaxy 480 Pen BBS and my Galaxy 500 Pen BBS. I'm speculating that they're the same resin. So, let's take a look. Let's unbox this package. I bought this on February 16th and it arrived here today, which is March 5th. That's 18 days. Considering the coronavirus issues we've had with shipping from Toronto, that's not bad at all. Uh, this is from Easy Buy. And since this, we'll talk about this when we look at the pen, but since this uh, pen was released uh, at a lower price on Easy Buy, uh, it has also come down in price further. And I bought another one, but it, even after I bought that, it came down in price a little bit further. Interesting. We'll take a look. Let's speed through this. And here we have the pen. In its pen sleeve with a little pen pouch. I've got a zillion of these things. Just for those of you who like it. And let's take our first look. Beautiful, isn't it? One. One and a bit turns to get the cap off. And there we have the Moon Man. It's got some fingerprints on it, so I think that they're at the shop. They're swapping these out to make them cheaper. Maybe they heard my video. Interesting section. Oh, that feels nice. That's uh, surprisingly light as well. I'm going to have to do some comparisons here. And it posts beautifully. Wow. It's a little bit long, but that cap is very, very light. converter. It's not branded, but it does say Moon Man on the end of the 
section. That's one of the reinforced converters. I think this one, and it does come apart. Which is nice for maintenance and cleaning. The cheaper converters don't come apart. Well, at first look, I'm very impressed with the feel of this pen. So, I'll have to clean this pen out and ink it up. Haven't thought about what I'm going to put in it yet. Let's just get another look at that chatoyancy. And let's take a look at it next door to the Galaxy 500. You tell me whether that's the same resin. They're coming from the same place. looks like it to me. Anyway, I will clean this pen out and ink it up, and we'll come back with some discussion of the parts and features of this pen. I'll give some measurements and some size comparisons, and we'll do a writing sample. And I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen after writing with it for a bit. My first impression is I'm impressed. So here we are back with the Moonman M800 Galaxy. Moonman never called this pen Galaxy, but Galaxy it will be called by me, and Galaxy shall be its name forevermore. I've written with it every day, sometimes extensively. In fact, I wrote all of the notes for this review with this pen, and I've changed the ink twice. Not because I ran out, but because I changed my mind. And I have a new ink to show you. I'm glad I spent some time with it, as there are a couple of things that I had to become comfortable with to dangle a preposition at you. Before we get to those things, let's take a good, close look at the parts and features of this pen. Starting from the top, there's a conically shaped pointed finial in the Galaxy resin at the top of the pen, which tapers up to a gold ring, which is part of the gold roller wheel clip. And this clip really works nicely on this pen. It's uh, very springy, and it allows you to clip it to various thicknesses of fabrics without snagging. This is very close to the Leonardo clip, but slightly different in shape. The ring below the finial is also different than the Leonardo, as the Leonardo's clip extends right out of that resin without the ring. The cap tapers up to two gold bands separated by acrylic and then another band of acrylic at the end of the cap. There's a small step down to another gold band at the top of the barrel behind the cap threads. The barrel tapers continuously down to another gold ring just ahead of the faux blind cap, also a conically shaped turned acrylic end finial. I have to say that the shape of this pen is very, very attractive. The cap comes off with a little more than one turn to reveal a uniquely shaped section made of the same acrylic and separated the, from the barrel by another gold band. Are you keeping track of the gold rings? We're at a total of seven gold rings at this point. Tolkien would love this pen. Let's look at this section a bit more. These cap threads are so small and smooth you hardly feel them. The extra space between the two gold rings here become an extra grip section space, which comes in handy with this unique grip. The section then curves down. It doesn't taper down. It curves down to a barrel-shaped end of the section, which ends at the Moonman fine number six size nib 
Uh, that's gold-plated steel. There's the Moon Man logo. Moon Man with a circle F for fine. And the Monteverdi-looking mountains. And the crescent breather hole. A very attractive nib. And there's the plastic feed. And of course, this Moon Man number six is the less expensive option. You pay about 20 to $30 more for the number six gold-plated steel Bach nib. Is it worth it? I'll let you know when Claudia sends hers to me for comparison. That'll be fun. The nib in the collar assembly unscrews easily and can be replaced with any standard number six nib. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes for a really nice balanced writing experience, either posted or unposted. This is the first roughly dual fold size and shaped pen I've owned that posted this well. Now it's time for some size comparisons, some measurements, and then I'll be back with a writing sample. Please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll give my impressions on this almost exact copy of the Leonardo Officina Momento Zero Blue Abyss and tell you what I like and what I don't like about this pen. So here is the Moon Man M800 and here is a Pen BBS 500. I'm sorry I should have matched it with the Galaxy, but the Galaxy's out on loan right now. And here it is with a Moon Man M600S and a Wingsung 699 and a Pen BBS 480. And here's the M800 with a Pen BBS 500. The M600 Moon Man. The Wingsung 699. And the Pen BBS 480. Okay, we're back with the writing sample of the Leonardo Moment, um, sorry, the Moon Man M800. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is a Moon Man. M800. This is a fine steel nib. And the ink today is Queasy Azure number five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know it was you. Now, I just want to talk about this ink for a moment. I got it from Bauer Inks in Toronto, the Canadian distributors of Queasy and Robert Oster Inks. I had a diamine sapphire blue in this pen until I got this, uh, this ink just a couple of days ago and I swapped. This is a much better match, but let's take a look at this test card I just did. This is extraordinary. I love Iroshizuku Kanpeki as my favorite blue ink, but this ink is quickly winning me over. I've never experienced an ink in my limited ink experience, of course, that shaded two different blues. Where there is less ink, so this is a cotton swab. I went over the whole thing and then went over it again just in the bottom half. 
the top half is less ink and the bottom half is more ink. But also in the writing here, I don't know whether you can see it or not, I'm going to show a still shot of this that shows it better. But where there's a little bit of ink at the top of the letters and at the top of this swab sample, the ink is a teal color. Whereas at the bottom of the letters, it turns purple. Now, if you know your color theory, and I do after teaching it for 35 years, that's quite a huge shift from the green side of blue to the purple red side of blue. It's just freaking gorgeous. I've not done any ink reviews previously, but a number of people have asked me to, and I'll be studying and working on a proper method of going about this very tricky process of evaluating the nuances of fountain pen inks. There are so many variables, and by comparison, doing a pen review is child's play. Good night, Andy. But I'm going to have a bash. Well, I'll have a bash. Now back to the nib on this pen. I like Moonman nibs, but I don't think I've had one that I haven't tweaked. And I've owned eight in total. Three number five size Moonman nibs and five number sixes. This one is no exception. It was smooth and a little dry and felt a little too round, if you know what I mean. Uh, it felt more like a ball on paper. So I smoothed it a bit and widened the nib slit a touch. Plus, writing with it for eight days straight has also made it come into its own. So let's check the wetness. I've had the cap off for a bit, so I don't know. Yeah, it's going to hard start a little bit. So it's still not as wet as I would like it. So I might just open that up a little bit more. But I might have some other plans for this I'll get to in a minute. As to line variation, that's a light touch. That's a heavier touch. Again, it's, it's not a flexible nib. It's steel, and you don't get much line variation out of that. Not much at all. Let's listen to it right. I don't know whether you're seeing that or not, but the tops of these letters are all teal and the bottoms are all uh, quickly going purple. Very nice. And some reverse writing. It does that very well. It's actually very smooth. And again, because I smoothed it a bit, I ran it on the micro mesh upside down a little bit too, but it did reverse write before. And some quick writing. Yeah, feed has no problems at all. Now, what do I like and what do I not like? about the M800. Well, how could you not love the look of this pen? It's just drop freaking gorgeous from finial to finial. The acrylic resin is as beautiful as any I've seen. The deep colors, the chatoyants, the swirls. You have this pen in a meeting and it's going to draw attention. I'm reminded of a story my pen friend Ron tells about pulling out a fountain pen to write something in front of a young store clerk. She looked at it and said, what's that? He said, it's a fountain pen. She replied, is that something new or old? He replied, yes. But I digress. I have to say I love the way this pen feels in my hand after a week of writing. Right out of the package, I found it awkward. Um, this is a big pen in terms of girth. But it's also... Feather light. The section is odd with its curved slope. However, I found a comfortable way to hold the pen 
and now I'm really enjoying that extra thickness in my hand. I really don't do well with small thin sections, so this long, thick, wide pen is a really nice feel. Plus, even though I'm not a pen poster, this pen posts so nicely and feels so balanced when it's uh, posted, I write with it posted and unposted. It feels equally nice in both configurations. I also love the visual balance of this pen in terms of the design aesthetic. The five gold rings visible when the pen is capped are a nice asymmetrically balanced design. When unposted, you have three gold rings that asymmetrically balance that gold nib. When posted, you end up with five gold rings, again in nice balance with that gold nib. Exquisitely done. Some of you will be saying, well, that's just Leonardo's design. But take a look at the Leonardo. The rings don't balance as there isn't one on the top finial. Now, what do I not like about this pen? Well, there are a few things. One is the nib. And of course, I made that choice. I could have sprung for the Bach. I'm not convinced it would be any better. In fact, I'm surprised at Moon Man for so slavishly following the Leonardo design right down to the choice of nibs. The Leonardo sports a Bach as well, a steel, gold-plated Bach. And they've had many issues with them. If I have an issue with a $30 US pen's nib, I'll just change the nib or deal it with it myself. But when you're paying 10 times this price for a Leonardo, and your German steel nib has issues, I'd be pissed, and many people were, apparently. So the nib didn't write perfectly out of the bubble wrap. Big deal. It's writing okay now. I'm not thrilled with it, but I have a solution with the help of a pen friend from the PenBBS Facebook group. In response to a question about PenBBS two-tone Waverly fine nibs, a friend contacted me and offered me two of them, as he had two spares. Wow. You know, I mean, again, knock me over. Halibut. <laughs> so I'm going to put a two-toned Pen BBS gold Waverly nib in this gorgeous pen, and I can't wait. I'm sure this would become a better pen than even the Leonardo. If you disagree with me, please send me your Leonardo, and I'll do a comparison. I promise to send the best one back. <laughs> The other thing I don't like about this Moon Man is Moon Man's lack of imagination. This is the exact design of the Leonardo. Are Leonardo going to lose business and starve? Well, I seriously doubt it. The Leonardos are all but sold out across North America right now. And I don't believe anyone in their right mind would think that they are receiving a $300 Leonardo through eBay or Etsy for $30 to $60 when the sellers are clearly marking these as Moon Man branded pens. But Moon Man has done more individual designs with the T1, the M2, the M6, and the M8, the C1, even though many claim it is a rip of another design, the N1, the S1. Many of their pens are actually interesting designs, not 99% copies of other pens. I think they could have changed the section and the clip and even the filling mechanism on this pen and made a unique pen with a really, really lovely resin. But this isn't the way of Chinese business, I think. There isn't a lot of profit in innovation there. So, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.